Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. We're back today with part two of Elphael Brace of the Halig Tree. And I meet you now during one of my many, many attempts to take out the last and strongest putrid tree spirit in the game. And of course, if you're joining us and thinking, whoa, 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 where are you? What are we doing? I'm so confused. Make sure you go back and watch part one. Link, of course, will be in the description. Now that he's finally dead, you'll be rewarded with a poxy amount of runes and a golden seed, which by this point in the game, you probably don't even need. So you may be thinking to yourself, oh my god, what a crappy reward to a very hard boss. However, the main reward is the fact that you now have access to the end of Millicent's questline. I'll cover her questline in full during her own NPC questline video. But just a quick heads up, there are two options here, one to challenge her and one to help her. This is one of the longest and one of the hardest quest lines in the game. So don't ruin it for yourself by challenging her. You've got this far, help her complete her mission. If you opt to challenge her, you'll be rewarded with Millicent's prosthesis and you can only get this if you beat her. It's a talisman that boosts your dexterity by five and raises your attack power with successive attacks. So it is an incredible talisman. However, you lock yourself out of the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, the Unalloyed Golden Needle, a somber Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone, and the only way in the game to revert the Frenzied Flame, should you have embraced the Frenzied Flame, granted by the Three Fingers earlier on in the game. So please, unless it's New Game Plus and you've already done this end to the quest line, don't challenge her always protect her. Now that that rant's out the way, I'll meet you back at the drainage channel site of Grace, and we'll start to progress through the next zone of this area. Hug the wall heading along these branches, and then when you get near the end, you can drop down onto this platform. Then you want to jump off to the left onto another branch, and start heading up this next platform, do a 180, jump on this branch, and finally we can get on top of this building. This is a massive area with loot all over the place, so feel free to do it in a different order to me, but I'll call out absolutely everything that you can grab just to make sure you don't miss anything. So now that we're at the end of this branch and I've grabbed my souls back, ignore them, I definitely didn't fall off and die here a minute ago. We can drop down here onto this platform, jump over onto the roof, and now we're going to fall down off the northern side of the roof onto this balcony. Take out the Kindreds of Rot, and then you can loot the Aeonian Butterfly. Now come inside the building and be super careful because there is loads more baby and adult kindreds waiting to mess your up. Facing towards the southwest, we will be taking that lift down eventually, but for now, let's head out the northeastern entrance and we're going to head left. I'll skip a large majority of this because it's just minutes and minutes of me taking out lots of kindreds of rot. You can get yourself a Ghost Glove or 7 just here. And then further down, once you've taken out this clump, there is also a Ghost Glove War 8 and a Newman's Rune. Further down still, right towards the edge here, as we're taking out these last few kindreds, there is even more Glove War still, and more importantly, the Ghost Glove War Picker's Bell Bearing 3. Once you've grabbed all of the loot, head back towards the building, and before we go the other way, we're going to take this ladder up and jump through the hole in the roof. Loads of kindreds and lesser kindreds will start spamming the pest threads attack at you. Be very careful, it is such a pain this area. Once you manage to deal with them all though, you can get the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman from this chest. Now we'll jump back down into the room we were in before, and this time when we head out of the building, we'll go right. On this side is a load of soldiers and royal knights, an absolute ton of them and you're probably quite low on both HP and FP restoration items by this point. So please be really careful. Honestly, I wouldn't blame you if you just wanted to sprint through the area, grab the items and get out. I will be clearing everything up just so I can more easily show you everything. So everything you can grab in this area includes the three arteria leaf just here. There's also a load of Mikula's lily scattered around. And then right at the end, once we've taken out the Great Bro Wielding Knight and the Spear Wielding Knight, you can also loot a Hero's Rune 5. This side of the building is arguably much, much harder than the Kindreds of Rot side, and also rewards you with some pretty pathetic loot, so I wouldn't blame you if you didn't even want to come here, honestly. But now we're done here, there's one last item we want to grab before we head down the lift. 
So I'm going to once again climb up the ladder. And then you can follow my route as we're dropping down these series of platforms and branches. And just here, you can jump over onto the side of the building and grab yourself a nascent butterfly. And now as I'm dropping down, I'm just realizing you could have actually grabbed this earlier by just using the door. <laughs> but anyway, we're here now. We've got the last item. It was a very unimportant one. So let's head down the lift and light the sight of grace at the Hallig Tree roots and prepare for a very, very agonizing boss fight. There's a few more things we're going to do before we head toward the southwestern end of the room and through the boss fog because I want to delay this fight as long as possible. So we'll head over here to the southeast first, grabbing a load of Aeonian butterflies along with the Traveler's armor set. Then once you've had your fun grabbing all the loot, start coming up the stairs here and you can take a lift up. This unlocks a shortcut of sorts and brings you to the top of the tower where we jumped off and fought the first Erdtree avatar. I'm not really sure the point of the lift, considering that we have just lit a sight of grace. We don't really need, like, I don't, I'm not sure where that shortcut's taking us. But anyway, I can no longer delay the inevitable. Let's go back down, head into the boss room, and start trying to tackle Melania, the Blade of Mikula. And I was really excited. I thought, oh damn, I've got pretty good at this game. I managed to actually push her into phase two during my first attempt. I thought this is going fantastic. And then in comes Waterfowl Dance to absolutely ruin my day. So let's try again and die even quicker than we did the first time. And I think for now, I will just shut up and let you bask in the pain of this death montage as I attempt to fight and defeat Melania, the Blade of Mikula. I'm going to jump back in again, actually, at the end of this attempt that you see me trying right now. Because this one was particularly heartbreaking for me because of the fact that she's in phase two. You can see I'm doing pretty well. We've got many healing items left. She's on about 10% health. I'm on full health. And just to add insult to injury and rub the salt into the wound even further, we die at the same time. <laughs> I beat her. What? And most bosses, if you die at the same time as them, their death animation is quite quick and it counts. It didn't even count. I have to do it again. Oh, God. That was agony. So we'll die one final time. And now you meet me back here on attempt number, I don't know, nine, maybe. And I finally, finally managed to beat her. And we are rewarded with Melania's great rune and the remembrance of the rock goddess. God, that fight is infuriating. So now, let me recollect myself and I'll meet you back here again for the next part of the video. At this point, I'm going to come back to earlier on in Elfail and wrap up a few items that I overlooked in part one then finish off by grabbing some incredibly rare, incredibly well-hidden items that we need to complete a couple of quest lines, and we'll go check out the lower level and try and deal with all the Royal Revenants. So firstly, halfway down these stairs that we came to right at the start of the first video, you can hop onto this balcony, jump off over to the left-hand side, and once you've very carefully taken out this soldier and this clean rot knight, you can head into the room just here, and loot the spirit ashes for clean rot knight finley now jump off the left hand side onto this platform and then once you've taken out all the enemies in the area we need to get up on this branch as you can see i don't quite successfully make the jumps from here what you need to do is head into this room and as we're climbing up this branch i'm going to pause here and show you two incredibly important items that i don't grab until much later on but you can get them right now you can either continue heading towards the top of this branch, or you can come the way that you see me going now, where you just head towards the top of the platform, 
And inside this room in the chest, you can get a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. And then at the end, right where it connects to the branch that I'm on right now, you'll see a seedbed curse. So make sure you grab them two items as well. Now we'll cut the footage back here and also grab the five old fangs. Now you don't have to come here and do this bit later like I did. So once you've grabbed them two items from up above and the five old fangs, we're done here. So we'll move into the next part. You meet me here now stood on this ledge. So what I'm going to do is skip forward in time and show you exactly how to get here because stupid old me didn't click record. So I'm going to teleport much further in time to a far stronger version of my character that's already completed the game to show you the run for how to get to this balcony. I meet you at the prayer room site of grace and just follow down these stairs and hop down the same platforms as me. Eventually you'll be outside of the room with the two clean rot knights in it and you can jump off the edge of the balcony here and in no time at all you will be in the exact right place that you need to be just here. Now head down the stairs into this incredibly dark room and round the corner you'll find the seedbed curse. This is the fifth and final seedbed curse that you need to complete the Dung Eaters questline. So stay tuned for that video coming very soon. Now we'll drop off the ledge and start destroying these crystallians with the stones of Garank. And once all three of them are dead, it allows us to loot this somber smithing stone nine here and also a pickled turtleneck. You'll now find that we're also on the bottom floor surrounded by a load of royal revenants. So I'm going to summon my mimic. So I'm going to summon my mimic tier to help me out here. You can also go in this room and grab a legendary item, which is a Lord's Rune. And now, using the power of the healing spell, let's start clearing out this area. Once this first one's dead, I'm going to start out by heading southeast. And as soon as you start to head into this room on your right hand side, another one will spawn. So get ready to turn around and take him out as soon as you've looted this three beast blood. Again, heal is going to absolutely trivialize him. And then once he's dead, we'll head south to take out this next one. Now, unfortunately, I get summoned to another world as a hunter when I'm right in the middle of killing this guy, which really winds me up because when I come back to my world, my mimic tier has gone. He's back on full health and he kills me. However, whilst we are here in the world of Catnap the Snap, <laughs> Catnap the Snap, what a name. I'm going to leave part of this footage in because I have a very tasty fight with the invader. I somehow accidentally find this awesome room that's hidden above the Erd Tree avatar that we fought earlier and he's hiding in here and I just mess him up with the cursed blood slice. He dies, we get a rune arc and we get to go back to our world. Unfortunately, as I say, I then get obliterated by the Royal Revenant. So I'll cut the video here and I'll meet you back right at the bottom of the area where all of the Royal Revenants are. I'll turn off the item so I stop being summoned to help people for now as we go through and try and take out all these Royal Revenants. You meet me now right at the northwestern end and I've just grabbed a smithing stone from this corpse and you see me here just in time to summon my Mimic Tear and die. So let's leg it back through all of the enemies and all the areas that we've already visited and finally, we'll be back here where I was summoned to the other person's world. This time, because I didn't get summoned, we're able to easily take out the Royal Revenant before finally being able to loot four Aeonian butterflies. We can also grab the loot from the corpse of the Revenant, which is a Ghost Glove Wart 9. And then there's a Golden Rune 12 just a little bit further along before finally using a Stone Sword key to access this room and getting the upgraded version of Marika's Scar Seal, Marika's Saw Seal. So now that we've completed the bottom area, we have finished Alphael Brace of the Halig Tree. Congratulations, this was an incredibly tough area. That will now lead us into wrapping up the Forge of the Giants and then finally getting into the crumbling Faramazula. Thank you as always for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.